without your permission podcast without your permission coming to you uh live and direct this is our first episode uh welcome and i mean we're just gonna um just start it off by talking about like why we're here what brought us here and why we needed to do a podcast yeah exactly and i go ahead no we're just i think we're just gonna do just that keep it simple introduce ourselves yeah and um and why we're here you know and what the reasons behind this podcast are mm. and uh so why don't you go ahead rich and kind of you know <laughs> I, um let them know who you are what you do and uh and how this all came about dog. um actor present time um activist also poet storyteller um creator um writer just writer just just a, a man of the arts a man of evolution a man that um is is trying to um just push forward you know what i'm saying through um through all the stuff that happened but prior to this um it's you know it was it was a it was a house it was a life full of trauma it was a life mm-hmm. for a generational trauma born and raised in in Los Angeles in East Los Angeles um but I say this you know like it's like I'm saying my story but my story is your story your story is my story and um I think that's like the most profound thing to why we're here and and why I chose and you chose to um to collaborate yeah, you to know? get this cracking yeah I mean because prior to this well I mean we we grew up in in um institutionalized you yeah. know we I started going to jail at, at 13 years old you know um um grandfather was an alcoholic um uncles were gang members drug addicts alcoholics and I wish that I I didn't have to say it but it's the truth and we started off like that just cutting right to the chase not glamorizing it but that is what helped shape for me and um and yeah like I, I would I would grow in um start going to jail at 13 years old you know drugs mm-hmm. and I, I guess eventually like fight a life sentence at 20 years old you know and that's um, when shit maybe got real and begin to turn around for sure um yeah it, it's there's so much trauma that happened in between but um I think those are like the the, the main things you know what I'm saying yeah. like um just being a, a being born without um being born and my father leaving you know my father I mean my father was there and I would I I would know him throughout my life but but he but he left he left at two years old and I'll be raised with my mom in East Los Angeles and she was struggling bro and like I know you know your family struggled too you know it's the same it's the the same story it's it's, yeah it's really the same story and um and I think that's like one thing that brought us together was similarities with um you know, having our mothers and mm. and always wanting our mother's love. Yeah. And, you know, Father Gray, he says something that really always sticks out to, I think, me, yeah. but I also think to both of us when he says that a hopeful child doesn't join a gang. Mm. And so, like, being hopeless, being a kid, growing up, trying to find identity, um, I think is one of the things that we're going to talk about. And also we're going to talk about, like, success, whatever that means to you. Right, um, right. Whether that be just being a father. Yeah. Or being an Emmy nominated actor. Right. Or, right. Um, or being, being a, somebody that works yeah. in the community. Yeah. And uh, is on the lines, on yeah. the margins. Right. With them. Right. And, right. And right. Every day getting to see people change their lives and redirect their lives. And um, I love you don't just chopping it up with you because I feel like we can talk about this stuff for days, mm. dog. And there's there's so many factors in um in you know in in the gang members' life. Right. And like that we don't that that society really doesn't see. Unless you're working with them, unless you're watching people unpack their shit mm. and, and be able to heal in front of your eyes. And I think that's a blessing that you and yeah. I have both had. And it's like, we, we, you know, a lot of people come up in front of the camera. A lot of people come up and on radio shows and, and they talk about it. But then that that's it. They're they're kind of detached from it. And and I think the biggest thing why we chose to collaborate, because we're not detached from it. We're back in the hood. And we're we're in the hood. Yeah. You know, we're not like... Where you're at homeboys, bro, yeah. and I'm at homeboys, or yeah. I'm, I'm getting shot to New York and speaking on the behalf of of gang members and, and incarceration and and giving people that don't know and yeah. might think they know, but they really don't know. You know, this yeah. is the real story this of why of why yeah. why a gang member becomes a gang member. You know, yeah. we're not some freaking like 
some people that we oh we wanted this i yeah. wanted to be in jail yeah. i wanted to spend my life in like in, it was glamorous yeah yeah i wanted to smoke methamphetamine smoke crack yeah. and be weirded yeah. out like i really <laughs> wanted that you Weird really out. wanted no. that you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. like so it, it's really like like we we're not gonna put it all into one episode because no. like we this is 30 this was i mean i i came to homeboy industries at 25 years old you know so it's 25 years old of 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 wreckage of trauma, trauma you know pain. so how do we put that how do you put that in a in a in a 2 hour movie we can't. how do you put that in a 2 hour um one man show but you what could we try will do yeah. is we will begin the dialogue mm. around it and the thing about it is it's a human healing it's yeah. not just a gang member we're inviting people to talk about their own healing yeah. their own trauma you open your heart and I'm, i open yeah i open my heart and you're going to open yeah. yours i give you permission How to you open were your heart how you're talking about like my story is your story right and right. your story is my story but also my strength is your strength and your mm. strength is my mm. strength mm. and so together we're going to begin to unpack some shit and invite you to unpack some stuff and we're going to get through this together yeah. and i think that's the beautiful thing about what we have right here is because we're building community with one another right, you know right, we're breaking right. bread and uh and and, com and the biggest thing communication you yeah. know nothing gets doubt nothing gets handled nothing gets uncovered unless the communication happens you exactly. know and the, and and that's what it's about do we have is this the only way to heal is this the only way to live your life no but it's one way and it's working for us and yeah. And will I probably change tomorrow? Yeah. We believe yeah. in evolving. We believe in evolving, yeah. And as humans, we either evolve or stay in an uncomfortable place. And I think that's what happened for me. So, like, for me, so I'm a navigator at Homeboy Industries. Right. Which is uh, more than a career to me, it, which is, like, my life purpose, you know. I get to help people, and they help change my life every day. Right. I get to see people come in there and uh, that are hopeless, and I get to see them, you know, take a stance in their life and say, you know what, I want something different, mm. and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah. And that shit inspires me, dog. Yeah. Like, that shit inspires me, seeing you come back mm. and being an example yeah. and saying, look, homie, this is what hope looks like in the flesh. This is hope in the flesh, dog. And if I could do it, you can do it. That shit inspires me. Right. And so, like, me growing up, similar story to yours, I mean, I grew up, my mom hooked on drugs at a young age. She started off smoking frios. Yeah. Which, for those of you that don't know what frios PCP. are, PCP and bombing yeah. fluid. Yeah. Um, angel and, and we are we are children of the 80s. And, and I say that, like, what is oh, what does that mean? You know, whoever's watching this across the country, mm -hmm. across the world. Um, children of the 80s in Los Angeles, we are the crack the generation. Crack epidemic. We are the crack yeah. epidemic. We were the children that came from an energy that was filled by people just losing their fucking mind on in drugs. Los Angeles yeah. on drugs. Yeah. And the government yeah. didn't know. And that's a whole different subject. Were they responsible? Maybe. But the, the government didn't know how to... Contain it. Contain it. How to help. Yeah. How to, uh, so it was just freaking... It was it was incarceration. Yeah. So it was like majority of people that I knew, their parents were... My mom was in civil brand. Right. I remember my mom, one of my first images of my mom when I was like two, three, four, I don't know, maybe five years old. She got arrested at the pad, in front of the pad, in front of me. They knock at the door, some detectives, probably for like boosting or something, took her to civil brand. Right. These are some of the first images. And like growing up, you know, you think like, Everything that you're taught as a kid, like, carries on, right, you know, as, right, you, as you right, grow right, up. Right, right, And so us being young, we're taught, like, do not call the cops. Right. Like, if you call the cops, they're going to take your mom away. Right. You know what I mean? So you grow up with a fear, like, damn, I can't even, I can't call the cops. Yeah. You know what I mean? You grow up with a fear to even call 911, because if cops come to the pad, they're going to be tripping on your family. They're going right. to ask who, Yeah, they're going to be who's harassing on parole, you. Who's right, on probation. right, right, right. Can we come in and search the pad? And usually someone's going to jail. Yeah. And so we grew up, like, not wanting to call the cops. And so these are things that we're going to begin to unpack. Right. You know, so that way our viewers, so that way you guys, our viewers, know, like, what it was like. Right. You know, what it was like for us to grow up in the county of Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles, East L.A., whatever you have. Um, but to grow up in, a, in some circumstances that just weren't, weren't the best of circumstances. Right. You know, but the beautiful thing is to come out on the other side of that shit and still be here talking to you guys today, you know, because I think that's the beautiful thing about like our lives is that dog, we went through some shit, homie. Yeah. You feel me? Right. Like I remember like not even having toilet paper for mm. I remember like us mm. having to have newspaper and, right. you, and you're wiping your ass with newspapers and you right. got the funnies on your ass. You got Charlie Brown on one cheek 
and you got Snoopy on the other cheek, and it's like, what the fuck part of the game is that? Yeah. You know what I mean? That we, was reality. That was reality, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's like, to go through that and then to, like, now have children, mm. you know, and to watch our children go and be like, damn, they're never going to experience that. Right. You know, they're never going to experience that. And I think that's what brought me and Rich together is that, you know, pain is the great equalizer. Right. And regardless of how, like, successful we might be and whatever that success looks like to us, we've been through some shit, you yeah. know? And uh, we've come out on the other side. Yeah. And, and and you know what? Like, we're together in this now, and it's like we're, we're doing something about it. We're not just going to sit back and be like, yeah, we went through some shit. We, we're no longer... We're cool. That pain no longer affects me. But in actuality, it affects me. Uh -huh. And we believe that it affects everybody. Because if you're not part of the solution, then chances are you're part of the problem. And um, we want to be a part of that solution, I think, more than anything. Does that make sense? Right, me? right, right. No, I yeah. mean, it's, it's right on. And, um, and I think that's what this show is about. It's about not asking anybody's per permission to get involved in the solution. And to whatever it is that we can do, whether it's this podcast or right. whether it's helping another homie that just got out, or whether it's like what you're doing now, going back to the pen, right. going back to some of these yards and visiting yeah. with the homies and like saying, hey, look, there's another way. Right. And this is what it looks like to take the mask off. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, Does that yeah. make sense? No, I mean, it's 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 crazy. It's like like me going back to like the prison yards where I, I went back to Lancaster State Prison and like that that's a yard where I caught a shoot term, you know, and I was in, uh, I did a year in the hole and to like come back like as a free man and the same officers that, that locked, that locked me in those cages were now opening the doors for me. Damn. What a trip, huh? Like, what is that? What, a what does that look like? What is that feeling? And I can't like, how, I don't know how, like I'm still processing that, you know, like, like seeing that blue Calif CDC uniform and and like and these subconscious things, like I was traumatized in California Department of Corrections, and now I'm like I'm going back. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 just a lot, you know. But um, but that's what we're here to share. You know that those are the stories that we're here to yeah. share. And I think like the biggest thing was coming into this, like our social media, social media is a big yeah. thing, you know? And like, we wanted to give you more than what a picture is. We wanted to give yeah. you more than what a 30 second clip or a minute or a two minute clip. We wanted to really dive deep into it and to like, let you guys know like what, like what we're dealing with, what our community is dealing yeah. with and how is it, it is affecting us and how it is affecting our people that are still suffering yeah. and, and, um, in this community of Los Angeles. And, and I think that Los Angeles, the, the, the ghetto is a universal language. There's mm -hmm. a, there, there's a ghetto in every, in every town, whether it's in Chicago, like yeah. the same problems that we have right now are happening are somewhere happening, in the nation. Are, are happening. Yeah. Like we know that yeah. Chicago is the murder capital. We, it, it has yeah. been, they have, and it's, it's, but it's the same elements, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Poverty. And, and and I don't know why there's not that that Los Angeles has this beacon of hope of homeboy industries. And I think a lot could be circled back and could be could be come back to Father Greg, you know, yeah. and, and the work that yeah. he's doing. But if it could work right here in this circle of 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 Los Angeles and homeboys, then why can't it work somewhere else? Yeah. You know, so I, I and it, I guess it's a it's also for me I want this to be a an, an exchange you know what I'm yeah. saying with our viewers like yeah. ask questions like you ask me I'll ask you questions and yeah. and 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 that's how we really like help our community in in a big way exactly and and like and no question is a dumb question right right like, right if you don't know then you better ask somebody right and growing up that's what that's and we're taught not to we're, taught, we're not taught not to, not to. We're, we're taught to like freaking bottle up these emotions don't and like speak you can't on it. cry yeah. you can't like don't let anybody don't reveal your cards because it was a form of survival exactly. and like to think yeah. we could speak so freely now you see us five years ago we couldn't we, do yeah, this we couldn't talk like this why couldn't you, know? you do this because we were taught to not talk about yeah. this we were traumatized you know it was it was within survival survival mode not to talk like i had to just be on point and just know how, learn how to survive to on that by. prison yard yeah and that's another thing i think we're gonna di like dive into is is why was it like that and how was it like that so it was like that because so i'm gonna speak my truth is growing up i was a kid 
that was I was born into a certain circumstance. I had no choice in the matter. But as a kid, you know, we're innocent, we're 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 pure, and then we begin to get hurt. Mm. And as we get hurt, you know, we're searching for like ways to be comforted. We're searching for ways to be helped in certain situations. And when that help doesn't come, for me, I was picking up game. Like mm. I, I was picking it up. Like growing up, watching older <laughs> homeboys that that operated in my house and that moved around and the way they the way they would act. Right. And I would go like, you know what? I don't like the way it feels to hurt like this. Like, I don't like the way it feels. So, you know what? I would see certain homies and the way they would carry themselves, and then I would take a little bit of him and put it on me. And then I would see another homie the way he was, and I would be, I would be like, you know what? I like the way he moves and operates. He looks like a man that doesn't take no shit. Right. So I would take a little bit of his character and put it on me. Right. And I begin to develop this character. <clears throat> and I don't think that's that's only truth for the gay man. No, that's I think true that's true for everybody. For everybody. everybody, you take... Is, you learn everything. We learn we didn't, everything. We didn't. We oh, this shit didn't come up on, on from in our mind. Exactly. Everything is taught. You learn how to be a a basketball player. You learn how to be a boy scout. You learn skills. You know, or you what, know whatever, whatever it is. Whatever, whatever it is. Trade like, it yo, is. I'm gonna work with whatever I got. And so growing up, we're putting this character together, right, to protect us, to ultimately protect us. Right. And then, like for me, my truth is this character got bigger than what I thought it was going to be. Mm. And this character eventually took me to places that I no longer wanted to go. Right, and right. then it was like, I forgot who I was. I had lost track of who I really was. I had lost touch with who I really was. And eventually I, I began to believe that I was this character. And I would introduce myself as this character. Right. And I would go to prison. I would go to juvenile hall, YA, whatever it was, prison. And I would put this character on. And I would move and operate along the terms like, that I created behind this character, right, right? right? And so eventually for me, it was like getting to a point to where this character no longer suited me. Yeah. Because I knew deep down in my heart I wanted something different. And it was a lie. It we, was a lie. Like, you, you realize what this is. You realize when you're sitting, and I think for most of us, when we're sitting alone in a cell. Yeah. With just you and your emotion. There's no homies. There's no mom. There's no... There's no There's drugs. No there. There's no one there. It's just you and that, and I guess that 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 system, that law system, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, I think for me it was when I was fighting a life sentence. 20 years old, um, I was in the hood, and, and, and it, I got cracked for a, an attempted murder, bro. Right. I got cracked for an attempted murder, you know? And, like, I remember that, um, I remember when my, my homeboy, my homeboy calls me, you know, and I was drunk that night. I remember when that happened, you know, and I wake up and like, and um, like, I remember that that night when it happened, right? Like, like phew, the adrenaline, you know what I'm saying? Like, bam, like I shot this fool, and like, bam, we go, we we go to the homies pad, and like, it's just like, but it's just the realization. I knew, like, I knew something fucking happened, bro. Like, I knew, like. I got yeah. this fool, you know what I'm saying? But wh I didn't know, like, what that carried, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think deep inside, like, I was like, fuck, dog, like, hopefully this fool didn't die. Yeah. Hope, of like, course. you know, like, and, and, and I didn't know why. I just felt like, like, that, fuck, if he, like, if this fool died, like, my life is going to be over, you yeah. know? And, like, and so, like, life goes on, and I wake up the next morning, and I get a call from my homeboy. And he was like, what did you do? He was like, what happened, fool? The, the, the cops are looking for you. They're, yeah. they're looking for you and the homie. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like, like, and I remember I hung up the phone, bro, and I cried. Reality sets in. And I cried, bro. Yeah. And I remember I called my mom, and I was like, hey, mom, like, and the, by that time, the cops had already had hit my grandma's, you know, and, like, this shit just became real, bro. And I was like, my life has just changed, you know, and, like, and I think that was like, like it was by myself. Like, where, where, where was everybody at? Like, it yeah. was, the, it, it was, and and that's how that that was the the, the seed of the change that that was gonna happen, you yeah. know. And I went on the run for that attempted murder, went to Texas, and um, and yeah, and I ended up coming back, bro. I ended up coming back, and I turned myself in, and, and um, and I was fighting thirty five years to life, you know. And like that was like, it was like fuck. Fuck, yeah. Like, this could be it for the rest this of my it. life. This is it. This is a wrap, you know? And, yeah. like, you know, being in the Alley County Jail, like... <clears throat> and it's like, the kid, Like, the... the 
the range that the majority of, of people fighting life are between the ages of 18 to 25 years old. Yeah. And they're all just young gang members from throughout Los Angeles, from Lancaster, from Long Beach, Harbor areas, the Valley. And and it's just all, and they're getting life, bro. And we're, they're getting life, yeah, you know? Up. They're You've getting washed them come up. Back from court, yeah. It's like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. You see them with no hope. No hope, you yeah. You see them come back from court. Yeah. You can see it in their eyes. Yeah, huh? yeah. You could say that it's uh, it's okay, homie, or but let's play not. pinochle, or but let's play chess, okay. but it's not okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, and and that's when, like, reality really starts setting in, you know? Like, so, um, yeah, that was, I think that was the, the big thing for me. Damn, and, and, and it's a trip because being alone, if, so for me was, for me when it really was like, damn, man, was when uh, I, was, I had just got six years, I had just got to reception, and then I had got news that my mom died. Mm. And so my mom, the relationship I had with my mother was like, it was estranged, homie. By this time, she was, I remember my mom used to get high, right? And, and up until I was like 14 years old, I would do anything for her. Right. Like, she was my hero. Even though she was a smoker. Right. She was my hero. Right. Because my mom was a gang member first. And um, and then she got hooked on drugs, you mm. know. And, and we know, like, what drug, what meth especially did. Right. And meth, uh, uh, once she got hooked on meth, it was like she began to hurt me. And she began to hurt me so much that, like, I, I used to think, like, she doesn't care about me. You know what I mean? Like, she can't love me, like, the shit that she's doing. Yeah. Like, taking the check, you know. She would take the whole welfare check, dog, and just blow it. And so these things, I would, I start, I begin to resent her, and so I thought like, so like by 14, 14 and a half, 15, I started saying I don't have a mom. I would see her in the streets. Her homies would come and they would be like, "Hey, dog, your mom smoked out over here with the wolves pad. You know, you should probably cut." And I'd be like, "I don't have a mom, homie. Mm. She ain't shit to me, dog." Or she would be smoked out, tweaked out. She'd be tweaked out. It would be early in the morning. I'd be getting up to go do my thing, and she'd be like, "Hey, that's my son." And I, and I would tell her, "Hey, you don't have a son." Like, don't be telling people that I'm your son. So I was in and out of the system, and um, my last bid, I was like, you know, pretty much, like, I thought that I didn't care, you know? Like, this character, you know, yeah. this character was a character that dealt good when it came to heartbreak, right? Yeah. So, or so I thought, you know what I mean? I didn't feel like I needed anybody's love anymore by this time. And uh, I get to Lancaster, and um, I got word. It was a trip, too, because it was like nobody was writing me. And there was a homie from Long Beach, and I was like, hey, dog, because he would get visits. And I was like, hey, is there any way you can, like, if I give you a number, can you, like, get a hold of my people? Because I was doing bad. Nobody was writing. Right. And I was like, whenever your lady gets the chance, have her reach out, whatever. And uh, so he's like, yeah, yeah, sure, don't trip. So time went by. I let it go. I'm programming now. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, You're whatever. Like, I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. One day he comes and he gets at me. And he goes, hey, Gene, can I talk to you? I had forgotten already that I had gave this for my hookup. Times already went yeah, by. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and I go, yeah, sure, what's up, dog? And we start walking, right? And he's like, he's walking me towards the middle of the yard. And right. he's like, he's like, and he's acting funny. And I go, and I'm like, what's up, G? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, you got happening? something to tell me, homie? Yeah. Like, uh, and we're walking, right? We're getting further and further to yeah. the yard. And I'm like, hey, big dog. Like where are we going, homie? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you could tell me right here by the by the motherfucking yeah, gate. The yard, yeah, the but, yard's yeah, not that tell big. Tell me by where the guards are at. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm like, hey, big dog, like, why are you taking me way over here? And he's like, oh, it's because he's acting funny, right? And so I stop and I go, hey, look, homie, if you're gonna try to pull some funny shit right now, like, I'm not gonna run, dog. I'm telling you, G, like, if you're gonna try to like don't feed me from the side or something, or if I got something coming, like, let's just take care of this shit. Like, yeah. don't walk me to the middle of the yard, right? And he's like, nah, dog, it's because I really gotta explain something to you, Wooty Woo. And I'm like, well, just, just explain it, G. You know what I mean? Like, just say it. But it was hard for him. Wow, fuck. It was I mean. hard for him. He goes, he goes, hey, Big Dong, um, I don't know how to tell you this, homie. I, I really don't, but um, he's like, your mom's dead, G. Wow. And I'm like, what? I'm like, you're tripping, homie. He's like, nah, nah. Like, like your lady, I mean, my lady finally got back at me, got a hold of your people, and that's why they haven't been writing you, dog, because your mom passed away. Hey. And I'm like, so I'm gone. I go, all right. You know what I mean? Boom. I go in. I tell the tower, hey, let me take it take it in. You know what I mean? He lets me in, whatever. The porters come by. I'm like, hey, G, get my Sally out of here. Like, I just, I'm not in a good place right now. You know what I mean? And that pain, homie, that pain, like, I never expected that pain. Ooh. You feel me? Like, it was, a, it was a pain that I would not wish on my worst enemy, dog. Ooh. 
it was a pain that brought me spiritually to my knees, dog. Mm. And guess what? I go, so I'm hurting, right? And I remember, like, hurting, hurting. And I go, you know what? I'm going to get over this. Mm. Like, time heals all wounds. Yeah. Like, I reverted back to the character. Yeah. Well, guess what, dog? The character did not save me this time, nah. homie. The nah. character did not protect me. I remember crying myself to sleep, dog. Crying, homie, like at night, like a baby. Just going, man, I wish I would have went and looked for her. I wish I would have went and looked for her. You know what I mean? I wish I would have never told her the things I told her. Mm. But there was no, there was no, that was it, you know? There was not, get, I wasn't There's getting no another get chance. There was no yeah. get back. And, uh, and I remember that it went on for months, dog. In months, I went to the hole. I tried to run from it. I tried to drink. I tried to get high. There was no shaking this pain. And I remember being in the hole, right? And, and, I, and I started thinking that I was losing my manhood. I started like, I wasn't the same, G. It's just like, there's no words that can describe it, but I was right. not the same no more. Right, right. I wasn't, sh I felt like I was weak. Mm. And I remember being on my last shoe term. That was the last shoe term I ever did. Um, and I remember like, like going, what's wrong with me? Like, what's going on with me? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, what happened to me? I remember looking in the mirror, and I'm like, how did I get here? Dog, it was like everything was coming off of me. Yeah. It was like I didn't even know who I was anymore. Right, right, I didn't even know right, who I was. Right. And I remember being a little kid, I started to think about my childhood, dog. And I'm in the hole, G. You going know what I mean? And I'm thinking yeah. about my childhood going, nah, this wasn't the way it was supposed to be. I know this is not what I wanted. I know that when I was a kid, I didn't hope to be in a cell like this. Yeah. I remember being a kid, and I used to watch Family Matters, fool. I used to watch Family Matters. Yeah. And I used to look at the dad, and I used to be like, I want a dad like that. Mm. I remember being a little kid going, I didn't care what the color of their skin was, fool. Mm. I didn't. I remember going like, I want a dad like that. And I remember looking at the mom going, I want a mom like that. You know what I mean? I remember yeah. the sister and the brother and how they had a good relationship, even the neighbor and shit. Right. And I and now I'm a grown man. I'm in prison, homie. My mom has just died. And I'm thinking like, I'm never gonna have that. Mm. That was the beginning yeah. of my transformation, right. dog. Right. That was the right. beginning of me returning to who I truly was. Right. right. But I had to go through those lows, homie. I had to go through those lows to realize that that wasn't me all along, you know? Right. And it's similar, and it's being alone. It's those times like being alone, going like, "Damn, that's not me." But who am I? Yeah. And that was the question that, from that, there. That's the biggest one right there. Like, like you could, like people could think it's so easy. Like we got this, sh we got this shit together. Yeah. But like we had to like recreate ourselves, totally recreate yeah. ourselves, and and become what we think we 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 are or what we're. We're supposed well, to we're be. supposed to be, you know, and yeah. it's 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 that's the hardest thing. And it was thing, hard, you know, huh? it's beyond, bro, because yeah. we look at we work at homeboys. I mean, we and I say we work because I'm at homeboys yeah. and I haven't left. <laughs> yeah. I stopped working there. I stopped getting a paycheck like seven years ago. But it's yeah. like I'm always there, and you see these older homies, and like, and like they're stuck, bro. Yeah. And you know that they don't want to be stuck. But they can't accept the lie. Mm -hmm. You can't. They can't. So they're stuck. They're rigid. They're still looking like they were the same that they had and been. And you see, it's painful. It's painful, bro. It's too hard. They smile and they could. They try to live life through your eyes, but they wish they could do it. Yeah. But like they're they're they feel that. And I think it's like this. Like the older you get, the harder it gets. Like I think this happened in our late twenties, mid twenties for us. But like. You you put like a, a a a homie a gang member that has been putting on this shield and putting on this 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 mask for like thirty years, forty years. Not that it can't happen, mm -hmm. but that it's very hard, hard. because like, but like what do you mean? Like I've lived like this for forty years. Like if this is not who I am, what then who the am fuck I? am I? And that's what scary. the fuck am I? That's scary. What like because even the beginning, even the beginning when I first came to Homeboys, I had an identity crisis. Right. I came and I was like, okay, this is not me. I right, know this is right, not me. Right. But who am I? Right. Homie, it was one right. of the most roller coaster type of rides that I had ever been on. Yeah. Because I'm like trying to still act, trying not to, trying to take yeah. it off, yeah. being vulnerable, being right. afraid. And it was like, then I reverted back to using drugs. Then right. I was like, am I a dope fiend? Yeah. You know what I mean? Am I a gang? And it's a middle fiend? ground. Like everybody, it's, like you learn, we you learn how to maneuver, you know. And and the thing about us, like we know how to maneuver. We could sit here and we could be on a panel 
with um with professors as we have with sheriffs now but yeah. then we go back to the hood and we could be with the homies yeah you not everybody could do that you know or yeah. go back to the prison yard and like it's it, it's and it's that you know it's it's yeah. that's where I, it's that's where we're living at and but i believe like god made it like that because they needed someone to be able to go through that that to, could come, come back to the again. rest and be like, homie, I got you. I got yeah, you. Like, you could on, do like this. I understand you. Yeah. Like bridge the gap. Yeah. You know, and I think that's one thing that we're doing. Yeah, for sure. Is 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 we're we're introducing you guys, we're introducing you guys to who we are. Yeah. So that as you take this walk and you take this journey with us, you you know who we are. You yeah. know who you're walking with. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? And yeah. that, and I think that's important because I couldn't have done this without people that had came mm, before me. Mm, I couldn't have done this. Yeah, like yeah. right now we're talking about yeah. what the walk was like, but I couldn't have done this with without, others. Without others, without like with Fabian, Fabian and Devora, Hector, Hector Verdugo, Father Greg, Father Emily G, Chapa. Yeah, yeah. And so these things are like, and we want to be whatever bridge that we can. Yeah. For whoever else is coming after us. Right, right. And we also want to be the one that introduces the people that don't understand yet. Right. To the culture or right. to the circumstances. And I'm, I'm going to give it up, bro. We're right. spiritual men. Straight up. Yeah. We're godly men. God, we believe We're in godly. God. We believe if it in, wasn't we for believe that. In the universe. We believe in the creator. Period. We don't put no title on it. We no. believe. I, and I'll speak. I believe in the Buddha. I believe in Jesus. I believe that it's, it's all that. We don't like to get caught up in the lies. We don't want to get caught up in identity. We just want to believe, and I, I, we believe in positive energy. You know, we and, believe and, in, and like for me, without faith, yeah, without having faith yeah. that God had a plan, yeah, um, none of my circumstances and experiences would have had so much purpose. Mm. So like now, mm. I can look back, and what's crazy is I remember I once looked back on my life as a, as as just a, a waste of time or or like a, a, a bad experience. I look I looked at my life as if. It was it was meaningless and and all the things I had went through were there was no purpose behind it. Yeah. And now because of where I'm yeah, at, and all, I, and it, I, it all it all and because of God, yeah. because of God, honestly, because yeah. if it wasn't for God in my life, my life would still not have no purpose. So I feel like I had to go through what I went through, right? Because God had a plan right. for me to live this out. And see what don't those that don't know now and that we're gonna bring that. You have your little brother. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, he's always been here, but like. Your little brother came along too, you know, and I have my little cousin that they mm -hmm. both work at Homeboys. Yep. So it's like, if they didn't have, if we didn't go through that, then they wouldn't been able to to get saved at a younger age, you know. They didn't. I mean, they still went through what they went through. Well, they didn't. They they didn't have to go through, you know, the what I'm extent saying? of what yeah, we went extent, through. Yeah, and, and x amount of years like exactly. that. Exactly, and so and then to watch them grow and mm. to watch them be man of God. And the transformation and, happened um, in, in those short times. Then, then everything that I went through was 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 worth it. Yeah, it was all good. It was all worth it. It was all good. You know, it and was, then to be able to have our other children, people, our and children, we're fa for fathers. So I get to like, yeah, I I get to relive How many my kids? five kids, three kids, and I feel, eight kids right here, and I feel yeah, eight <laughs> kids together, both yeah. of us, and we're we live in one bedroom apartment. Yeah. Me and Rich, we're raising our kids together. He usually has this apron with polka dots. He makes waffles on the weekends. Yeah, I'm. I bring home all the bread. We kind of have this weird thing going on. It's uh, yeah. what is it? Don't ask how many moms, but we got Jose, eight kids. Jose and Kate plus eight. Yeah, couple We're child gonna supports. start old reality. It's reality. I'm trying to. What am I? I we you we know, almost what am I gonna say? Up. What am I gonna do? Yeah, I can't be without the yeah. guy. Yeah, we live together. We got the podcast. We don't fuck around. <laughs> We're just trying to make but, the best with what we got. But it's that, you know, it's fatherhood and, and not only saving our, our siblings, but like saving our, our children. Our children from this. Our children. But you know what? It's a trip too because it's making me a better dad. Yeah. Like I know things, I have a perspective now when I'm like this right here, like on, on raising my children, it's like I know what not to do. Mm. Like I know exactly what not to do yeah. and that inspires me of what I need to right. do. Right. Right. It's like I need, like I know how much my children need me. Right. And I wouldn't, I would not revert back to the streets for any Anything. damn thing. Yeah. Because it was I know all worth it. It was, it all, was worth all worth it. it. All the hurt and the pain. Yeah. It was all. Is, I, is, yeah. Is now the experience that drives me to be a better father, a friend, a person that's able to help people that are coming right. out of the communities we right. came out of. Right. Like a person that can be at home, boys, and say, you know what? I stand in my own integrity right. and, and I want to do the work and I want to do the work because well. Because this is, we stand, I stand behind this. You could get the 
the doctor degree, a college education. You could hang out at as many juvenile halls and as many prisons. Mm -hmm. But what you can't get is the deep understanding that we what have. Because like. we, yeah. we lived we it, bro. Lived it. And came out on the other side. And that's the shit that you cannot buy at any Ivy League mm -hmm. school. I'm not saying that you everybody would want it, but there's people yeah. that spend their whole life trying to understand this and get paid X amount of money. Yeah. And like you don't have the credit that we do. Yeah. And it's not we're not glamorizing it or trying to uh, but we on know it, it's but a it, gift. it's just it's, it's yeah, a it's a gift. It's, it's a, a gift. gift. And we walk in that truth yeah. and we walk in evolving like that. And we want and we don't want to be like, I'm better than you. It's just like let's collaborate. Let you wanna help, I wanna help. Let's and do let, this together. Yeah, let's help together. Yeah. And whatever that looks like. You know, as long as it's doing the right thing. And um, I think, yeah. I think, yeah. It's um, good. It's good. It's, it's good like yeah. that. And, and I think this is a good beginning. Eventually, we want you guys to ask some questions. Right, right. Um, I want to eventually ask Richard what, what kind of draws he wears. Is he a brief type of guy? Or whatever you guys are thinking out there. I mean, you can ask me. I'm be, I'll be frank with you. Sometimes I wear a brief. Sometimes I wear nothing. But these are some of the things that we want to begin to discuss. Yeah. and I Because we don't want this to just be all like... But you know what, though? Huh. Like, the briefs and the boxer things, like, I mean, I'm not going to get too much into it, but I couldn't wear briefs, bro. I used to wear draws. I used to wear straight boxers. I couldn't wear... I had like to wear sheets. boxers. My boxers were huge. Like, my boxers were so big, people thought they were gym it's shorts. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. Like, like and like, you wear everything Because they were big. comfortable. You like, wear everything and we're, big. Like, and we're specific. Like, you know... The, the thing about gang culture is very yeah. specific and it's not, we're not glamorizing it, but it's very specific. We are make, we came, but you're Native American, yeah. but you, you fell under the, the Mexican yeah, Southern element of mm -hmm. California. So we, we dress a certain way. We talk a certain way and we present ourselves in a certain way. And like having like Big ass clothes <laughs> was like my comfort. Like Our comfort, huge, the universal huge comfort. Ass clothes. Yeah, I remember the first time like I got out of prison, like I was like, all right, yeah. cool. Then I could buy like the type, like some good boxers, and I bought yeah. big ass boxers, huge like, ass um, boxers. Yeah, and and like they didn't fit me, and I was like, what what happened? I could not wear shorts if I wore boxers because my fucking boxers would hang down past my shorts. But the thing about in pri in prison, you would wear boxers and, and they would have them. a string. You yeah, have a string. You would, you would have a string and you would tie them up and like, but yeah, like so it, it, yeah, it's it was all. And fucked so up. these are some of the things I mean that. Like, this was a part of it. Yeah. Wearing big-ass clothes. And for me, because I was chubby, I guess that's why I wore big-ass clothes because they were just more comfortable. You know what I mean? It kind of hid some of the shit that was going on. I remember on did an interview, the and they were like, so what type of style did you have? And I was like, fuck, we didn't have, we didn't have no style. <laughs> whatever was on the spot, man. Whatever was cheap. Whatever someone gave me. It yeah. was like, if you gave me a pair of pants, I'll sport them. Fuck it. I wore the same pants for like four years in a row. Yeah. Period. Took care of them, though. My grandma was like, look, you got one pair of khakis. And it's funny because when I first got into the neighborhood, so my grandma, man, my grandma was a trip, dog. Old school. She was born here. All, so my family were all from here. Yeah. Right? So my grandma was like old school Chicana. You know what I mean? Like stitching up your khakis. She'll buy you a pair of khakis. And then she goes, these khakis got to last you like three or four years. So what I'm going to do is she would buy some big ass khakis that were long. And then she would hem them all the way up, right? Why she would get but bigger? The way she would hem them was like there'll be a line right here, right? And then every year she would unstitch them and lower. It's like them. it's and there like, was like marking each line. the calendar. It was like, like each marking, line. Yeah. And you're like, God, Grandma. And they were they were like uh, high water. I mean, uh, bell bottoms because they were so wide. Yeah. And it was like, damn. So when I got my first pair of Ben Davis, oh, it was a wrap, homie. Ben hey, Davis. Ben Davis With permanently the creased. Yeah. Permanently creased. I didn't take those pants off. I didn't take those pants off for like a month, dog. They must have smelled like butt. You know what I mean? But but I sported them. I sported the shit. I ironed them. them. I ironed them. I loved them. Yeah. Aquanet hairspray on them. I loved those pants. It was like my cousin gave me those pants. And it was a trip because it was like some, nobody. Who would have thought, hey, I'm going to give this fool some pants. Like that was a necessity. Having right. clothes was a right. necessity. Right. There's, there's a certain, you, you there, there's a. It's a whole like suit, right? Like you have to be a gang member. You have to like you. It's you have entire. to yeah. You have to yeah. uh, embody and that. And it's simple, like, but it's but it but, but it's, it means yeah, a lot. But it's a necessity. Yeah, and it's like a white t-shirt with some khakis. Right. And and you're on. Yeah. You know what I mean, and then we had pro wings growing up. <laughs> we had some pro wings, and my shades to lean to the side, like tortas. <laughs> 
and the it, bottom was all gone. Yeah, the bottom's yeah. gone. And then when I got my, so I got fat feet. You know what I mean? Like my feet are wide, and so when I got my my Cortezes, Cortezes are not made for, for people with feet. wide and fat feet. So what my Cortezes used to do was they would lean to the side, right? And when homies weren't looking, I would like get them and like try to like scrape them so that they would lean back in. You feel me? And so we would like be kicking it, and whenever they weren't looking, I would just like sh- scrape them back in, and that was the shit we had to go through. You know what I mean? I wanted to fit in, dog. I wanted to. You fit had in to look, back. yeah. You had to look fresh. Whatever it took. You know what I mean? Whatever it took. And um, but you know that's some of the stuff we 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 want to be we want to we want to we want to ch- chop it up about. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And just be real about. For me. Being in the neighborhood wasn't glamorous. Right. Being in the neighborhood, like, for me, was a last resort. And that's the truth. I remember, like, when I got in, I remember, like, my older cousin telling me, like, no matter what, we're never going to get into the hood. Uh-huh. No matter what happens, we made that pact. And then similar circumstances, you know, he was going through whatever he was going through. And God only knows to this day what it was that drove him to get jumped in. Right. But he got jumped in. And I'm like, what the fuck? We didn't talk about it. He didn't say why. He didn't tell me, hey, I'm considering it. He just got in. Yeah. And it was the summer right before junior high. And then I remember being, like, feeling lonely. You know what I mean? Like, now he's kicking it with them. I don't quite fit in yet because they've already asked me a couple times and I've said no. Yeah. You know, so they kind of look at me like. Whatever. Yeah. And um, and so I had my friend. My friend, he was, like, my best friend. His name was Christian. And I would go to his pad. Every day I'd be at his pad. And, um. And his mom used to have to tell him, hey, it's time for Jose to go home. You know what I mean? I would hear her little shit. And she would be like, hey, you know, it's getting late. And so I would always do this thing with the um, with the cheese, homie. I used to go into it because they had food. And we didn't really have food like yeah. that, right? So they always had food. We only had food on the 1st and the 15th. Right, right, right. And, the- and, and my grandma was one of those that you would see in the, in the grocery store. On the 1st, that shit was filled up with corn yeah, dogs, yeah. hot pockets. And they were, it was gone, like in three or four days. It was gone. It was all gone. And then we would be struggling until the 15th again. And so they always had food consistently because they had regular jobs and shit. Yeah. Where they got paid like every week or every two weeks. And they had like sandwich stuff. And um, and so they would have like mozzarella cheese. And, and what I used to do was I used to get the mozzarella cheese and chop up blocks of it and put it in coffee mugs. And I would put it in the coffee mug and then I would put that shit in the microwave and just heat it up. And I would be cooking toast at the same time, right? <laughs> and then I would get the cheese out, and I would pour that shit on the toast. Oh, it was delicious, homie. And I would eat that shit, right? And then I would always hear her say, hey, Christian, who the fuck's doing this to my cups? There's all kinds of cheese stuck in the inside of my cups, right? And I'd be in the living room like, fuck, she's going to kick me out. You know what I mean? Right. And so one night. But you kept on doing but it. But I kept doing it. I was a kid, fool. I kept doing it, right? And so one night. <laughs> One night, yeah. I go down there, and I knock at the door, right? And fucking, and they come to the people. I can see their eyeball, right? That I'm looking up at the mm, people. Mm. And then they, like, back away from the door, right? And I'm like, what the fuck? And I knock. And they don't want to even come to the people no more. Mm. So the side little window, I go to the side window, and I knock. The living room light's on, TV's on. And I knock, and I'm like, hey, it's me, Jose. And they turn off the living room light. Mm. And then they turn off the TV. And I'm like, and they pretend they're not home, fool. That shit hurts so bad, dog. Mm. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, not even them. Not even do they yeah, want me yeah. here. That was really, like. That was my last that was resort. It. That was it. It was like, where else am I going to go? Yeah. So trip. I walk, and I get to the top of the hill. I'm sad, fool. Like, I must have been like a lost puppy dog, right? Because yeah. when I get to the top of the hill, my homeboy and my other cousin that's older, he was they were up there. And my, my older cousin was like 16. He had already been banging for years. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah. to me, this fool's like a vet already, yeah. right? He's 16. And he's G'd up. They're up there. And then uh, the homie goes, hey, what's up, G? Why are you so sad, homie? You know what I mean? And I just couldn't hide the sadness. Yeah. You know? I wanted to cry, fool. I yeah. really just wanted to cry. I wanted them to just hold me while I cried, but I wow. couldn't. Wow. And uh, he goes, hey, you want to get into the neighborhood? And I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll get in, you know. And my cousin didn't say nothing. You know, it's a trip to this day. Like, I think about, he didn't say nothing, dog. He didn't ask me. He just looked over at me. 
And maybe he went through because the same I, yeah, thing. I think it's all that, bro. Like, I think all of us have those moments, like, when we get into the hood. Like, we're all broken children. Broken. Yeah, so, like, it's just, like, yeah, like, as you should. Like, it's it's about that time. Yeah. Okay, like, you reached that point. You're at that point You're now? You're at that point now? All right, cool. Okay, come on. All right, let's do We've it. We've been waiting yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, and, and it must have been the same thing for him. Yeah. Because he looked over at me, and then it was just one of those looks, like, let's roll. Right, because we could, mm-hmm. like, and... We could be from the same neighborhood. We could be next door neighbors. We could even be in the same household. But trauma affects every individual different. So, like, who knows how it went down for him? You know, it's... I remember one of the moments for me is, like, when I barely, like, started going out with the homies, it was, like, I remember there was, like, five of us. And um, we stood out late. We all stood out that night. And I remember we didn't have nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. And we all we all slept like it was like this priesthood like where they where the priests lived at and we jumped the gates and we were little bro like 14 15 and I remember it was cold that night and we all huddled up together and we all just knocked out right there Damn. and like no one said yep. nothing like I'm gonna go home or let's like we just accepted it you know like like, who does that? Like, at now yeah. looking at it, like, why were these fucking little 14-year-old kids out in the middle of winter? And not wanting to go home. Not wanting to go home. And their parents weren't obviously giving a fuck. Yeah. And they slept together. And just, like, but, like, that did something to me. Like, I was like, okay, well, I'm not cold by myself. Exactly. Yeah. I'm cold with my friends. And, and they're here and for And they're me. here for me. Yeah. And it was... It was like those little fucking moments, bro, that like it was it was just better than being home, you know? And being it was alone. better than being alone and yeah. then being home, bro. And like, yeah, I think those are that that is the beginning of of why gang members. I mean that's that I mean that and that's, that's our, our story. that's our yeah. story right there. But I think it's a factor. And I think like, you know, from the experience that I've had with gang members, right. I don't know one gang member that that joined the gang that was full of hope. Right. Or that came from, like, yeah. you know what I mean? That was just, had a prosperous future ahead of him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I Everybody that I know. And that's the big thing, though, too, because, like, even, like, the laws that are happening right now yeah. and, like, how these, I mean, little fucking David, bro. Yeah. David, you yeah. know, for 15 years old, he a was kid. with us last little year. Kid, he was yeah. with us last year, yeah. bro. He came to my one-man show, and right after that, they snatched him up, and yeah. now he's fighting a life sentence, yeah. and they're, they're debating whether they're gonna sentence him as, as a an adult. as an adult. Yeah, you know, and he's, he's a, a kid. He's a kid, bro. Clearly, I mean, you can see he's a kid. He's a small kid. He's, yeah, he's a tiny kid. He's even small for his age, and he's going through the system of where they have to question if whether, they, yeah, whether we're you're, whether you're, he's fit to go to prison. Yeah, for the rest of your life, with or, or with a lengthy sentence, or to a to a juvenile facility. And that's what, and that's a, like a, that side. And we've we been to people, his court, so we know what it looks like. For he's a kid. I mean, you can clearly see he's a small kid, but those are some of the things. And so even when you and I were growing up, oh, there was things that were happening. I mean, we got homies right now that we know that have barely come out off of doing right. life my best, from a My juvenile. best friend got life at 15 years old, bro. My best friend got life. You know, I, and, it, and I remember that, you know, and it's just like that. that's the type. Like, whoa, like people are going to be like, what do you mean? He, yeah, like, like people from your area, from your hood got life. 15, Kids. 16, 17 years old. This is something that was accepted. What do you think it, it does to to our community when when youngsters are 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 like accepting this as as just a common as a thing as a, as yeah. a reality? As this, is, this is just the way it is. You so it's all saying? it's all these key components: trauma, broken homes, um, alcohol uh, alcoholism, yeah. um, Drug ga- gang, you know, gangs, yeah. violence, um. Police, like, and not knocking, not knocking law enforcement. They're doing their job. I get it, you know. But them, nobody coming out and giving the extra, giving that extra helping hand or going to school. Like, well, what about school? Like, these, we're, we're in Los Angeles. Yeah. They're like, their counselors are not reaching out, but the counselors are knowing that these kids are suffering. Yeah. You know, but no one, may, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not gonna blame it on the school system or the unified school, the unified school district, but. They're, they're not equipped maybe to handle yeah. that stuff. So yeah. it's a multitude of things, but it's our community and our society with, you know, what, what, what turns. And, and the thing is, is what are we doing to 
to go in the direction of changing that. Right. You know what I'm saying? What are we doing on a major scale? And so that those are some of the things we want to talk about too. Is let's let's get somebody on. So we're gonna be having guests. Yes, on. for sure. You know, we're for gonna sure. be yeah. having guests on the show. Uh this is not just gonna be a two man show. This is gonna be it's us. A, yeah, it's a conversation. You know, yeah, conversation, create dialogue on, around some of these issues around the school system maybe or around what does it look like for us to better be equipped to serve the youth you right know? or our, our community right now happening happening with the with immigration with right the now immigration. and like how families how, are being are traumatized yeah. are traumatized right now like kids are traumatized because their parents like i mean my family some of my family was born in mexico you know they're not here legally you know but like like they have to worry about their fathers or their mothers being taken away, or their fathers or their mother are taken away right now. Yeah, what and are these? For yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they live in the ghetto where yeah. there's gangs, where there's where drugs. Up but now they don't have the only people that are here to protect them are now gone. Yeah, what the fuck do you think they're gonna become? Yeah, and what chances do they have? Yeah, what chances do they you really know? have? And what resources are out there for right. them? Right, and so we want to create dialogue around all these different subjects, and um, and we're gonna be bringing people on. We're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna be consistent with having guests that can really uh, discuss some of their stories, right? And from both, <laughs> and from both walks of life, yeah. different walks of life, not right. just one perspective. But we want to open it up so that we are able to have dialogue with somebody maybe from a different perspective than us, right. and we can create a, a conversation around that. You know what I mean? And and we can maybe get a different perspective. I don't know. I think like you because of like the work that you do, how you you know you do work in Hollywood, right. you're able to rub elbows with certain people that. You know that some of us are not able to, right? And, and that kind of opens it up for for a whole nother lens. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. But and, and like, and, and it comes down to these people that I know. You know what I'm saying? These people that I know. These people that come through homeboys. You know, everybody and their mama comes through homeboys. Yeah. Powerful people in the game yeah. and all. And I mean, Obama was there, bro. Yeah. Obama True. went there two years ago. You know, yeah. so like, if Obama could go, anybody could go. Yeah. Um. But it's like at the end of it, what I see it, it's like, no one truly cares like we care. And we gotta be the ones. To, you know what I'm uh, saying? Like, really, bro. And, and, like, and that's why. And we're I don't here. expect you to care, bro. I don't yeah. expect them to care because you didn't live it. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to convince you. You know, of, of my story, of our story. You know, but I know that when I have a conversation with you about it, it means a whole. It means something. Yeah. Something else. You it know? means that. And if you want to help out, cool. You know what I'm saying? There's been a multi homeboy industries, and not just Father Greg. It's a multitude of of, of great people that have came to. Father Greg's side through yeah. these 30 years that have yeah. helped them out to create this multi-million dollar business now. Yeah. But um, but nobody understands these stories and like Father Greg. You know what yeah. I'm saying? His best friend, as he said, was Cesar Chavez. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Chavez understood that because he he walked he walked that walk, you know? Yeah. And, and um, that's really who I, I want to talk to. You know what I'm yeah. saying? What are we gonna go round and round and yeah. and sip what you know what I'm saying? Sip Chardonnay. Pop pop cheerio. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck did they sip. Uh, yeah, uh, some mimosas. Yeah, mimosas. <laughs> mimosas, mimosas. Mimosas, mapusas, paposa, whatever you want to get. A Salvadorian tamale. Yeah, yeah, we Hey, but we wanna we wanna bring. We're G doing on. it. So, we're doing it. So G's coming, we're Father. G on. Yeah, bring. We're put your Hector list of Verdugo. questions. Yeah, Hector Verdugo. Fabian Navarra. Yeah, we got a lineup. We got an all star lineup. Right. Um, and yeah, and that's just and it. what if, you said you is know real. What? And if they happen to bring some pupusas with them, fuck then it. I'll eat I'm them. eat them. I'll drink it. He's a vegetarian, so he can't have anything with meat in it. Pescatarian. Pescatarian. He goes to church, too. All that shit. I'm more of a Protestant myself, but the thing is, whatever it is, right. more power to you. Guys. Right. Now, me, I'm a carnivore. I eat meat. So whatever. You're, just, I don't fuck with mayonnaise, though. So if you're going to bring any food, don't bring it with any mayonnaise. I'll eat a fucking buffalo burger. And like I'm proud to be I'm islands. three years vegetarian, no meat. And bro. I respect that, but yeah. I'm not gonna do that. And like I'm gonna like and that type of stuff though too, bro, because our like what is our community fed? They are fed the bullshit, bro. As you can see. But we're gonna go into that later, fool. You wanna start talking about weight and shit? No, Why? I'm not talking about weight. I'm All talking right. about like just like it's so fucked up, bro. Like when we're when you were taking me to the airport the other day, um, 211. What was it? Like a billboard. We're off the 710 freeway. Four locals. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's you know, the that's death drink. That's There's death. a McDonald's on every corner. Every corner. And look Beverly what it's Hills doing don't to got me. that shit. Like, this is the shit that is Pacific doing Palisades to me. Pacific Palisades don't got no still reserved. 
billboards yeah, on their fucking old English. Yeah, what three the fuck? For, <laughs> we see specials. you guys. Yeah. We see what you guys have been doing in our neighborhood. It's we like, see it. Fuck, come on. I hope it changes. They're but I'm gonna selling, talk about it, they're bro. They're not selling fucking uh, the Mad Dog 2020 on Rodeo Drive. They, they don't sell it there, bro. Straight up. Bro, Fools they would be you know, coming out bro, of the Prada they, store they, chunking they, them. They, they're so fun. And like, they, they're so Just imagine, up. though, if motherfuckers were drinking 2020 and going to the Prada store. They would fuck it. They, they would, would fuck riot. shit up. They'd be they would boxing riot. over purses yeah. and shit. Yeah, they Imagine, would, it, that's, that's fire shit. water, homie. That shit, that's like that night train you shit. You can't that's... even drink that shit around gasoline. That shit would like, a combu- it'll just yeah, spark your just, shit on fire. Yeah, you just like glow Your whole shit. mustache gone. Boom, drink that shit. Go tease out of we there. We see that shit, bro. Like, that's the type of shit that we're talking about. Like, oh yeah, um, live on government assistance. Yeah, it's cool. Just yeah. stay on welfare. But that does not look like cheese. That's not cheese. That's that not shit fucking don't even cheese. Mount, that doesn't enough. even melt, bro. <laughs> Why does is that it? cheese have hey. a fucking... Plastic around it, yellow Why plastic is it around like it. Yeah, that? yeah. The cheese is plastic. The cheese is plastic. Yeah. Fool. You try to mount it. You gotta eat it fast. You gotta just eat it and swallow it. A couple bites and just knock it down. That's survival tactics. We th- that shit fucked up. Like that shit fucked us all I up. I think that's bro. what happened to it's, me. It's... Was the cheese? Fool. I think the cheese fucked me up, dog. Sergio. I think that's what it was. Was the cheese? Because I ate a gang of that shit. I would it's eat fulfilling, like, right? It would be like a block like this, and I would just knock down just like knock it? three quarters of that bad boy. Just boom, half off the top. You have to put a lot of it in shit for you to even taste it. Because if you just try to put like a little slice. Or you just blast like, some tapatio on just it. Just blast a gang of hot sauce in this shit. Get some tortillas and just put some butter, butter? on it. Butter? Yeah. It, it, and if you want to get it, like, if you want to get fucking yeah. bougie with it, put a little sugar on it. Yeah. Wrap it up. Now you got churros. Would you, okay. <laughs> Tortillas, butter, and bologna. Ooh. That All shit summer. You me hungry. All summer. Hey. But do you ever put the bologna in the microwave? No, but I would heat it. I would on put it stove? on the fire. With the fork? <laughs> With the fork. <laughs> With the hot dog? <laughs> Barbecue that shit You know right what's there. bomb, though? Palabra. This is bomb. Uh, corn tortilla? Uh-huh. With a weenie. You just Ooh, roll that Yeah, roll that up. shit. That's a fucking like Mexican a thin a hot dog right there. Yeah. Corn tortilla. <laughs> With the with the yeah. weenie, bam, Boom. and I would cut it. Ooh. I would cut it so it would get like inflamed in the hot dog. Cause you want to make it look nice, like yeah, it's a because it can't be it can't be crispy on the outside no, and cold on the inside. the inside. You gotta slice it. I would it. eat them cold sometimes, fool. I ain't even gonna lie. I would just wrap them and knock them down. You know, what used to fuck me up my mm. my grandma and like I like back then like the Mexicans used to use that shit. Did you remember the red lard? Fuck yeah, I love that shit. Hey, my grandma would put that shit in the papas, everything. Put it in the beans. Hey, I remember my grandma Boom. came from Mexico one time, and she was cooking beans. Uh-huh. My grandma, Mexican from Zacatecas, yeah. right? And I came in the house, and like, and my eyes just started burning. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking smoke is gray, y'all. The fuck? Just, ah. All you just hear is, that shit hurt, dog. Sh- oh, like, what the what fuck? What she cooking? Yeah. She's just yeah. frying everything. Everything gets deep fried. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. it is. Beans, they put the think, lard. I think it was so bad for us, like they outlawed it. The lard? They the don't lard, sell it no the red, No, I don't know where the to find box? that. The, box, the ranch the market, box. fool. They still have that? They got that shit to this day. You know what my grandma would do? After all the shit would fry, she would pour the grease into like a little bowl and, and let it sit it? on the stove. Yeah, it reuse that shit because it had flavor in it after. If you like cook some bacon and you save it, it tastes like bacon flavored, fool. And then you put that shit in some beans. Then you got, then Fire you got like bean, bacon pork bean, and beans. Pork and beans. Put some sugar. All right. It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. But look. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. We have a lot of shit to talk about. Right. There's other recipes too. Yeah. We're going to pop out some other recipes. Yeah. Some top secret shit that. Um, how to make, how to make um, jail wine. You can, we can make some of that. Puno. Or. We might. We can make, make white lightning in-house, on. In-house tamales. Right. Have you ever had that with the You know corn what chips? I think we should do? We could probably make some pruno and then we could drink a cup right I can't here. drink, fool. I don't drink no more. For pruno, the record, I'll I don't drink, fuck around. But you know what? Did that pruno, the thing about <laughs> people don't. don't know about pruno, they think, oh yeah, you guys are drinking. That shit will give you the runs. That shit will fuck you up. Just uh-huh. be sitting, just peeing through hey. your butt. <laughs> peeing through your butt. Nasty. Right? You'd just be sitting Were you right the only here, one? And it would just be and falling like, through yeah. his chair. <laughs> you would just sit down. Rah. Hey, but I. Since I don't drink anymore, we I'll can drink do a couple of pruno for you guys. I'll do some fucking um but you, some uh orange chicken with pork rinds. Ooh, ooh. I'll, I'll fuck with those. 
We can make. We can. He make. can drink the pisto all day. I ain't okay. tripping. All right. I'll fuck with the pork rinds. Uh, uh, orange chicken pork rinds. Okay. With some noodles. We we'll can, do a teriyaki bowl. We can bowl. make tamales. Righteous with, ones. With nacho and yeah, just just nacho you chips. Smash you gotta to smash powder. them in the bag, right? Put make the water, it in the masa. Bam. Good. It's a wrap. All right. We can so, do that for you guys. Thank you for uh, for being a part of our cooking channel, um, Homeboy Cooking Network, and <laughs> where uh, you kill them, we grill them. And uh, come back next week when we're frying uh, teriyaki salmon and um, uh, noodle shish kebabs. But uh, <laughs> that would be. But uh, yeah. thank you for uh, you know for being here with us and uh, and we just uh, we hope we uh, you know we we begin some dialogue around some right, of the right. things questions. we talked about. Hit us with your questions. Hit us with some questions. Get at us without your permission. Coming to you live, or not live. Live, but coming to you regardless. We're, right now, yeah. we're coming. To, we're recording yeah. it live. Yeah, yeah. You might. It might not be live when you see it. Okay. But yeah, we thank you. We love you. <laughs> without your permission.